Nikola Motors has just gone out and done something extremely interesting. They've launched a new brand by the name of Hyla, which is going to be their hydrogen infrastructure solutions provider to support not only their own hydrogen fuel cell trucks, but also other customers that want to get into the game of green hydrogen and fuel cell powertrains. In this video, I want to discuss what this brand is, what are the products and services they expect to offer over the next few years, and also how this plays into the cost parity of fuel cell vehicles with diesel vehicles, because obviously that is the number one concern on the minds of investors and customers. And it is undoubtedly going to be the number one metric that Nikola is going to use to scale up their revenues and increase their profit margins. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's understand where Nicholas coming from, what Hyla is and how it fits into their overall business plan. Now, obviously, I've been following this company for the past few years, and although they've executed at a really high level, there is still uncertainty around their hydrogen business and how they're going to be able to produce it, distribute it and sell it to their customers at a competitive price to diesel and natural gas. Now, although this is a very complex problem to solve, somebody needs to take that charge to solve it. You can't just sit around and complain about high costs when there is actually no production coming online and there is no integrator for bringing the hydrogen to the actual customer effectively. Now, yes, there are some hydrogen refueling stations in the US, particularly in California. But the entity that controls those stations is not only invested through Honda and Toyota, which are the manufacturers of fuel cell vehicles that sell in California, but they also offtake and buy all their hydrogen from natural gas resources. That obviously defeats the purpose of investing in hydrogen in the first place, because even though, yes, hydrogen vehicles are zero emissions at the use point, producing the hydrogen is an inefficient process, which means you need to focus on the emissions that the production takes place. And because natural gas is a very volatile fuel, prices of that hydrogen that's supplied to those stations increases with the price of oil. And that has obviously gone up in 2022, resulting in a cost disparity for end users. And this right here is where Nikola's plan with Hyla makes much more sense. You see, Nikola's Hyla offering essentially is off taking hydrogen, not only from natural gas resources, which are going to be cheaper, but also from green hydrogen parties that are making it from renewable electricity. And the reason why that is important is because the cost of solar, for example, over the past 10 years has fallen by 90 percent. And only over the past two years have we seen investments in electrolyzer production capacity truly come online. For those that don't know, an electrolyzer is the device that is used to make hydrogen from renewable electricity. And guess what? That green hydrogen is expected to be cheaper than diesel in certain countries by 2023. This is all being driven by scale, not usage, meaning more companies investing in hydrogen more companies producing factories that make hydrogen equipment and more companies understanding the purpose and role it's going to play in the decarbonization race. And that's why Nikola's Hyla brand makes sense, because obviously, if you're going to sell hydrogen, you might as well sell it to other customers, not just your own ones. And that's where the profit margins are going to expand. That's where revenue is going to scale, which in turn is going to bring down the cost of their equipment and make this business more viable. And that's why I think Nikola decided to make this global brand. And this is something many other companies have done in the past. You've had big players like Enel launch their own subsidiaries by the name of Enel Green Power, which is all tasked with investing in solar and wind assets and also producing green hydrogen and renewable energy. And you also have big examples in the form of Fortescue Future Industries, which is a subsidiary of one of the largest iron ore producers in the world by the name of Fortescue. Now, I know you guys are probably asking this question. Why does Nikola even need to invest in a mobile hydrogen refueler and off take hydrogen from other companies? Why don't they just rely on building a hydrogen refueling station wherever their customers might be and then buying the hydrogen from other companies that sell it at a cheap 
price? Well, the simple answer to that question is it can be done a lot faster if Nikola launches its own infrastructure solutions company. Their goal is to ramp up production of their fuel cell trucks, but that's not going to happen until there's customer demand and customer demand is not going to come until there's infrastructure solutions that are readily available. The problem with hydrogen is not how complex it is, how inefficient it is. It's how much people don't understand it, which is resulting in a lack of investments, which as a result keeps the cost elevated at very high levels. And the benefit of using hydrogen in the first place is that since it is a fuel, it can actually be transported on trucks. It is a fuel that can be transported unlike electricity. Yes, you can transport electricity over transmission lines, but you need to build permanent charging stations and permanent electric grid infrastructure, which needs to be cited by the correct authorities. With hydrogen, on the other hand, you can transport it on a class A trailer to whichever customer needs it at the right time. You can't necessarily do that with electricity because obviously the customer would have to invest in an electric substation and an associated charging infrastructure with it to actually fuel or recharge their vehicles. So this is an edge that hydrogen has, and that's what Nikola is trying to exploit here. They're trying to use the mobility of hydrogen, its extremely light weight and high energy density to speed up the process of customer adoption and help reduce prices for the long term. They're not going to make their own hydrogen if they don't have the trucks, and they're not going to make the trucks if they don't have their own hydrogen. And the only way to do that is by making sure customers have it at the right place at the right time. And not only is hydrogen much easier to transport than electricity, but it is more energy dense than any one of its nearest competitors in diesel, petrol, or natural gas. Which means even if the conversion process of electricity is much lower than battery electric vehicles, you're still able to capture a lot more energy in the form of megajoules per kilogram of hydrogen or batteries that are available. And although we don't know the exact specifics of what's exactly inside the Nikola hydrogen refueling station, we do have some images and it's pretty obvious to assume that this is going to have 700 bar tanks. It's going to have some gas drying equipment, some mass flow sensors, some regulators and a refueling receptacle to allow customers to refuel their vehicles at 700 bar pressure extremely safely. And unlike what many people would believe, the complexity of a hydrogen refilling process is not that different from a gasoline or diesel one. You still have dispensers, you have pressure sensors, meters, PLCs, and all these control units that are often required to manage a fuel and operate it safely. And that is exactly what Nikola is doing here. They're essentially taking this physical station and putting it onto a mobile trailer. That comes with a lot of different complexities because in a physical station, you can connect physical lines underground that go to different resources and power all the subsystems. Nickel, on the other hand, has to process the hydrogen from external resources, dry it out, make sure it doesn't have any contaminants in it, purge the entire system, and make sure it can all fit onto this little trailer that can be used by customers in an effective way. And the fact that Nikola is building their own fuel cell trucks at the same time as they're doing this is what's going to really allow them to get the ball rolling for hydrogen, which is something that not many other companies can say. You have companies that are developing fuel cell trucks, you have companies that are making hydrogen, but none of them are doing both of them at the same time. And that I think is a recipe for potential success if executed properly, because as we all know, the chicken and egg problem is what has reduced hydrogen investments so much. And as for those wondering how efficient this mobile refueling station is going to be, I'm going to make a whole video about energy efficiency, but just be assured that compression of hydrogen is not that energy inefficient. It typically takes around 10% energy to compress the hydrogen to 700 bar, which obviously makes it worth it because then you're able to store a lot more energy in much smaller space. And Nikola estimates you can fill around 15 to 30 trucks per day with that one class eight trailer. Now there are going to be other systems that are going to take more energy as well to operate the entire refueling process like compression, heat exchangers to cool the hydrogen and venting stacks. But that is all just done to safely make sure hydrogen can get to the end user. I'm sure the customers don't really care about these small inefficiencies because this is something that also exists in the oil and gas industry and the electricity generation, which obviously is more under the radar today because of its scale. And that, in my opinion, neatly brings us on to the last reason Nikola's doing this new Hyla venture, 
which is the fact that they're going to be able to offer a near consistent rate of hydrogen to their end customers. Obviously, the problem with gasoline, diesel, and even electricity at your house or a commercial facility is that it depends on the company that you're buying it from. You're obviously buying electricity from National Grid, Eversource, whoever your utility may be. And that rate fluctuates based on when you're using that electricity and also based on their own production costs, which typically rely on natural gas and coal itself. And because Nikola is procuring their own hydrogen, they expect to offer a steady price of hydrogen to their customers through long-term contracts. This is extremely beneficial because not only does this mean their customers are able to mobile refuel their vehicle without having to invest in their own hydrogen refueler, but they also get hydrogen at a cheaper price when prices of oil or renewable electricity are high. Because guess what? Residential, commercial, and industrial rates of electricity are much higher than those at wholesale levels. If you're buying the hydrogen from a company that is a producer of that hydrogen, just like if you were to buy electricity from National Grid or Eversource, it's going to be much cheaper than buying it as a residential area. And obviously, if you're going to put an electric charging station at a commercial warehouse or a plant, you're going to be paying those commercial prices for the electricity that you're getting. So you might as well consider investing in a fuel cell vehicle if Nikola is able to provide you the hydrogen on demand at a fixed rate where they're the ones taking up on all the cost. And that obviously also includes their partners like PC Energy who are going to be taking on the capital expenditure with producing and transporting that hydrogen. So in summary, yes, there are a lot of things that Nikola and Hyla need to do over the next few years, but they are on the right path with a business plan that could make a lot of sense for end customers in an industry that is seeing a lot of tailwinds through incentives and demand for electrification. There's a lot of hard to electrify industries and hydrogen is going to play a very important role in those segments. And I think Nikola is taking the right chance and the right opportunity with this new business brand name by the name of Hyla, which obviously should spur investment in overall hydrogen demand and raise awareness about the benefits that this technology provides. But as usual, guys, that is just my take on the situation. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as usual, thank you very much for watching.